Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect and today we're going to learn how to remove dark circles in Photoshop still keeping it all natural. Have a look at this photo. She is smiling, right? Look carefully under the eyes. Now, according to this book of body language, chapter 3 says, a natural smile produces characteristic wrinkles around the eyes. Insincere people only smile with their mouth. Now, what does that tell you? Look back at the image again. We don't want to completely remove this area, right? And make the smile insincere. We need to maintain a balance where the skin looks good and the smile still stays intact. And to do that, today we're going to use the technique of frequency separation. Now, if you want to learn the basic concepts and the science behind frequency separation, watch this video first because we're not going to be covering that again. It's going to be a fun tutorial, so without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, check the links in the description. Before applying any of frequency separation, let's create some check layers. Now what are check layers? Check layers allow you to see more than we can see right now. So let's create a curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now take the slider on the left and take it to the right. This makes the darks darker. Just like so. Do the same with the slider on the right. Take it to the left. All right, now let's zoom in, have a look at this image. As you can see, the darks have become darker and you can control it to your heart's content to see more details around here. All right, now as you can see, it has become very saturated. Let's desaturate it. Create a solid color adjustment layer. This is a much more realistic way to do it. And then choose white or gray or anything you like. Hit OK. And just make sure you choose a color with no color in it. For example, white, gray, no red, no blue, nothing, right? and then change the blend mode to color. Now, all of the colors are gone. You can get back to curves and then just enhance the details so that you can see more. And then let's make a group of both of these. With one selected, hold the control or command, select the other one so that both of them are now selected. Now press control or command G and you can name this check. And this is just for checking. All right, now let's Get back to frequency separation. Let's start that. Okay, now we can turn this off. We don't need this for now. Select the layer. Make two copies of it. Press Ctrl or Command J twice. This one takes care of the color or the tones. So you can name this color or low frequency, whatever you want. So the color and the tone stays in the low frequency. The texture stays in the high frequency. So we can name it color, low frequency, whatever you want. And we can name this texture. First of all, let's turn the texture layer off and come back to color layer. Then go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Now we need to blur to the point where the skin texture is completely gone. So take the slider all the way to the left, then gradually increase it. So let's sample from this area so that we can see it inside and we can just zoom in to see this area more closely inside and let's just increase it so that all of the skin tone is gone. See, their skin tone still there. So we will increase it. I guess for this example, four would be a fine number to be at. Now, one more great way to look at it is that you can turn on the check layer. So let's cancel it for a second. You can turn on the check layer. You can see it more clearly. Then if you go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur, you'll be able to see it much more clearly. Still, I guess it would be four. Four is a good number to be at. Just hit OK. Now, let's turn off check for a moment. Come to the texture layer. Turn it on. Go to image and then apply image. Now you already know this, most of you. So let's select the layer to color. So we want to subtract the color from the whole of the image so that only texture stays there. And so we choose the blend mode, subtract, because we want to subtract. Make sure the scale and the offset is 2N128. Okay. Once you dial these numbers, once you dial these numbers, now you might ask why these numbers? Again, check out that video, it explains the science behind it. Now once you have dialed these values, just hit OK. Now change the blend mode of this one from normal to linear light. Now when you make a group of both of these, texture and the color, hold the control or command, select the other one, press control or command G and you can name this FS. Okay. Turn off the group and turn on the group it should be the same. It means that we have successfully separated the color and the texture because both of them combine to give you the exact same image. 
because if you turn this off, it's the original image. If you turn this on, it's the combined and it's exactly the same. Nothing is changing. Now, first of all, we need to work on the color and then we will work on the texture. So to work on the color and the tone, you can choose to turn off the texture, but that's totally upon you. So let's go ahead and create a layer between these. So click on the new layer button between these and all we need to do, you can also turn the check layer on, remove these dark areas under there. So let's collapse this. So take a brush. If you're using a tablet, I would suggest you choose this brush called Soft Round Pressure, Opacity and Flow, as you can see right there. If you don't have this brush, you can create this very easily by setting the opacity and flow to pen pressure. If you're using a mouse, I would suggest you use the Soft Round brush and just make sure you have a very low flow. Okay, so I'm going to select the Soft Round Opacity and Flow right there and decrease the flow to somewhere around 10%. If you're using a mouse, that should be around 3 to 4%. Okay, now let's make sure the brush is soft and big enough, not very big. Now before we paint, go to the eyedropper tool and then sample, select current and below. Because we don't want to sample from the top, we don't want to sample the black and whites. So we just want to sample from the current layer and everything which is below it. And then make sure the sample size right here is 11 by 11 at least because if it's point sample it can sample from a noise and it can be a false color so you can choose 11 by 11 or 5 by 5 doesn't really matter let's choose 11 by 11 that would be fine anyway you have blurred it a little bit select the brush and then just sample and paint hold the alt or option take a sample and slowly paint over these areas now in situations like this sometimes when you zoom in and paint it looks all right but when you zoom out it looks like what the heck was I doing? So here's what you can do as well. You can make two windows. So go to windows and then arrange new window for example FS. So that way you have two windows for the exact same thing. Then go to windows and arrange two up vertical. So on the right hand side, you can just keep it zoomed out, maybe a little zoomed in. And on the left hand side, you can keep it really zoomed in. So you can see the real time changes on the right hand side. Have a look. So whatever changes you make here will be reflected on this one. So if we zoom in and let's make a very drastic change. Let me just increase the flow and let's make something like this. See it updates over there. So that's a great feature and you should do it this way. Whether you're doing dodging and burning or frequency separation, this technique really helps. So let's keep it to 10% and start painting brighter. So take a sample and paint. You can choose to turn the check layer off, but it helps me. Now we need to keep the dimensions intact. We don't want to make it flat. We just want to remove these dark areas under the eyes. So what I'm doing here is taking samples and painting. So hold the Alt or Option, click to take a sample and then paint. Okay. So sampling from the bright areas and paint, sampling from the bright areas and paint. So holding the Alt or Option, taking the sample from a bright area and then painting there. Now some areas are supposed to be dark. We don't need to brighten them because if we do, it can flatten the image. Have a look at this area. This area should be dark because it's facing away from the light and it should have shadow. So if we brighten it, the cheek will become flat. So be very cautious. Ask yourself, where would the dark areas or the bright areas be if there were no dark circles? Just ask yourself and then paint. So keep an eye on this. I think I painted a little extra white. See, I did that. That keeps a check. You can also turn off the texture layer if that helps. That really helps you see what you're doing. Now here you need a little bit of darkness. But all you need to do, you need to remove those lines. So we are kind of sculpting the image and we need those lines because she is smiling and we have to keep the smiles intact. Keep an eye on the left hand side, see what you're doing. There's a lot of darkness here, so we need to brighten it a bit. Okay, so let's turn this on and let's turn off the check and let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before. This is the after. It looks so much more natural right now. We need to do some work still now. Let's turn on the check back again and let's turn the texture off. Let's 
zoom out just a little bit to see what we are doing. This looks pretty good. Now keep in mind, we have yet to work on the texture. Now we need to maintain that kind of structure over there because she is smiling. This looks all right. Now here's the before, here's the after painting. So we have the dark area over here and after painting we have removed most of them. So if we turn off the check, have a look, we have removed most of them. Let's turn it on so that we can see better. There's a couple of things that we need to do over here. We just need to make this area a little lighter so that it's not very dark. Have a look, so here's the before, here's the after, here's the before, here's the after. So we have come a long way, really long way. So that was extra, before, after. Now, we need to go back to the check properly and maybe let's make it even more darker so that we can see what's happening because I'm doing the cheek right now and I need to see more over there. All right, so here's the before, here's the after. I think I've done excessively here. So we will take the eraser, decrease the flow to 10% or let's go 5% and just erase it from just this area. Let's go back if we erase too much. Now let's get back to the brush and let's start painting over here. This looks all right. So let's have a look. So here's the before, here's the after. Oh my God, a lot of it has gone, right? Let's zoom in and let's just repair some other areas as well. Okay, so let's come back to the curves and let's allow for more detail so that we can see what's happening. Now, where are we painting? We need to come back to this layer. Let's collapse it. Let's have a look at the zoomed out version. It looks so much more natural and realistic. Now we can turn on the texture and have a look. Great. Now all we need to do, we need to remove these lines. To do that, we need to first have a backup. So how can we have a backup? Here's how. Make a copy of the texture layer. Select the texture layer and press Ctrl or Command J. Now it might seem that we are doubling the texture, but we are actually not. Change the blend mode from linear light to normal. Next. Hold the Alt or Option, click on the line between these two. Now we are clipping this to this texture layer. So this is the texture copy. So whatever we do inside of here, if it goes wrong, we still have a backup. Okay. So with the clone stamp tool or the healing brush tool, whatever is your favorite, select it, the regular healing brush tool, right? Zoom in and just make sure the sample is current layer only. We don't want to sample from anything else but the texture. Now, slowly and gradually, we will just remove those lines. Hold the Alt or Option, take a sample from a nearby area and just paint over it. Just like that. No rush. Do it slowly, do it gradually. And you will just replace the texture because you're working on the texture and the colors won't be affected. Make sure a sample from an area whose texture you want to be replicated in the area that you're painting in and the texture must match. Okay, so for this area, we cannot do this texture. We have to do this kind of texture, right? So we will hold the Alt or Option, sample from a nearby place of the texture we want over there and then paint. We need to keep some lines to maintain the naturality of the image. Two lines are fine over there. Now let's zoom out and have a look at this. It looks so much more natural. Turn off the check layer, have a look. So much more nicer and natural. So here's the before, here is the after. If I turn on the check, you'll be able to see it more clearly. So here's the before, here is the after. Looks natural, the dark circles are gone, looks great. Now, finishing touches. We need to just zoom in, have a look. I think this area has gone a little darker. So I'm gonna go back to this layer. Probably let's go ahead and create one more new layer because we don't wanna just mess with that layer. Select the brush, make sure the sampling is current and below. Let's get back to the brush and then just take a sample from here and paint just to make this area a little lighter. Okay, now it looks better. 
I think I painted too much. Let's go ahead and decrease the opacity of that layer. This is fine. All right. And we are good to go. So let's zoom out. Have a look. Here is the before. And here is the after. Looks great. Now at the end, and this is very, very crucial, less is more. And I know you've heard about it a lot of times, but doesn't make it less significant. So decrease the opacity. Because we have to have a little bit of naturality here. Let's keep it at somewhere around 70 ish. Okay. Now it's natural. It looks good. And she looks fine, right? So here is the before. Just turn off the check. Here's the before. Here's the after. Just a minute difference. Looks so much more natural and much nicer than wax statues. So that's how to naturally remove dark circles in Photoshop. Now you need to do the other eye yourself. I'm not gonna do it for you. And here is the final result. So this is the before and this is the after. Just a quick recap. First of all, create some checklists to see more than you can see by directly looking at the image. In this case, we created a check layer with the curves to see more of the darks, right? Because we wanna remove the darks. Then we also created a color fill layer, a solid color adjustment layer with white or gray or anything neutral and then changed the blend mode to color to take away all the color. Don't forget to make a group of it and name it check so that it becomes convenient for you. Then we applied frequency separation, color layer and texture layer. And in between we painted to remove the dark color and on the texture layer we used the clone stamp tool to remove all those lines. At the end, do not forget to keep it natural. And if you think you have painted too much, simply decrease the opacity. And also, don't forget, a natural smile produces characteristic wrinkles around the eyes. Insincere people smile only with their mouth. So keep the smile intact and you'll be good to go. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.